Hello again and welcome to the Casio Prism CMath Run channel. Uh, today we're going to dive right into the heart of the calculator and see what makes it uh, stand apart from everybody else. What this calculator has, besides the color screen that none of the other ones have, is what's called a picture plotter. This thing is actually very, very cool. It's uh, icon I. If you press the uh, left parenthesis, you would get there. Or I'm just I scroll down to the I. Press execute. It's asking me to open, so I'm going to open up this Casio folder. I've got two choices today. We're going to be looking at picture files. That's the G3P file. I'll press open there. It comes pre-installed with uh, 40 images combination of video or flipbook video files as well as picture files. Picture files allow you to do some re really cool math. Next week or the week after we'll be taking a look at the flipbook picture video files. Right now I'm trying to find a nice um, picture do some mathematics on so I'm going to just preview some of these. These are some of the files that have come preloaded into the calculator. I like that one. I may go to that one. There's lots of arches here. Uh, the one I'm looking for is a uh, bridge. You know what? I think I'll go with this bridge here. So I'm just going to go back and select this one. This one is called bridge. Now the idea with this is that I'm going to try to do some mathematics on this bridge. Here it looks parabolic to me, so I'm going to try to fit a parabolic curve right over the top of that. Uh, not really sure what to do here, but it says press option, so I'll press option. I want to make some kind of a plot. I get a pink arrow. Let me move the pink arrow to my start point. Where do I want to start this curve? It looks parabolic to me, like I said, so I'm going to start there. I'll press execute. I'll pick a couple of more points. I'm going to try to go with uh, five points here. I could go with more, but um, just to get you the idea of what this thing can do. And accomplish some really nice math here. I'm going to pick the apex here, the maximum point. I'll, I'll show you how to find the maximum to this curve, what the height of that bridge span is. I'll pick another point. And one more point. I'm going to try to find this last x-intercept here. I went a little too far. Press execute there. Okay, now that I'm done, I'm going to press exit to get out of there. Well, I'm going to try to fit some kind of a curve to that. So it looks like I want to try to do a regression. All I'm doing is using the function keys, if you can see my arrow. Now, it looks quadratic to me, so I'm going to try to fit a quadratic on there, which is an F3. It gives me an equation. I went through all the trouble of doing this, so I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'll put it into Y1. And I'll go ahead and draw it. As you can see, there's my parabola right over the top of that curve. Uh, I could make it thicker. But, uh, yeah, you know what, in fact, let me make it thicker so it makes it stand out. I'm going to define the graph here. So, I right now, my style is not to be thick, so I'm going to change the style. Make a nice thick blue line. And I'll execute that. There's my regression equation. There's my equation that it's pasted in the Y1 graph. So now I want to try to find out some things about this. What are the roots of the equation? Notice I like it says roots. So I'm going to press roots, F1. It's going to say, is it you're looking for the regression equation or are you looking for the equation you pasted? I'm going to go with the equation I pasted. The answer should be pretty much the same. So there's one root, which really nice. Is I know there's two roots, so I'm going to press the right arrow key and find the second root. Let's see if I can find some other information about this. Let me find the maximum. I'm just going to press the maximum key. It says, again, do I want to find the regression or do I want to find the curve? So I want to find the curve. The maximum point is occurring at uh, x 0.134 and a y of 1.1136. 
And notice I didn't have to do anything except simply press the uh, key for maximum. As long as the answer is in the domain, it doesn't even have to be on the screen. Well, let's find some other interesting points. How about we find an x point or an x coordinate? What if I find out when uh, x is, no, I won't do it on the regression, I'll do it on the equation because I've been doing everything on the equation. x of um, 0.5. What's my x value of 0.5? So there, there you have it. x value of 0.5. My scaling on here must be really small because I am going way off to the side there. Uh, let's try to do a y value since I know this scaling is very small. I'm going to try to do a small y value. I'm pressing the G solve, which is graphically solving some of the interesting points I'm finding here. I'm going to do an xcal. Well, like I said, the uh, scaling on this is very small. So I'm going to choose a y value that's a small y value. Notice there's one, but I know there's more than one place where that happens, so I'll just toggle over with the right arrow and I find both of them. So I can toggle back and forth between those points and just jump around from place to place. Uh, now let's see if I can find the area under the curve between the roots. So again, I'm going to go with a G solve here. I'm going to toggle over. I found the integral. Now notice the integral symbol is dark, which means there's a subfolder underneath there. So I'm going to press that. And I'm going to say I'm going to find the integral between the roots. Again, I just did one button push there. Again, I want to know is it the regression equation or is it the equation pasted? There's one root. Toggle over. I'm going to start at the right-hand side. I'm going to go to the left-hand side. Argument size. Oh, I must have made a mistake there. Let me press. There's one root. Oops. Let's try that one more time. So I just go G solve. I'll go over here. I want to find the integral between the roots. I did not press enter the first time. When it gives me the left bound, I'll press enter. When it gives me the right bound, I will press over and enter. And there you have it. There's my uh, area. And it gives me all the information, the upper and lower bounds, what the value of the integral is, the fact that I'm finding the area under this curve. It's estimating it as well as finding it. So let's see. What else can I do here? Well, let me go back into my options. And I'm going to add in. Let me exit out of there. Go back into my options. I'm going to define a new graph. I'm going to define when y equals x and draw it and hopefully I'll be able to see where y equals x. I did not select, so let me go ahead and select that. So I will press select with an F1. Now I'll redraw my regression equation, my quadratic. There is my y equals x line. And again, I can do things like find the intersection now. So I'm going to find out where this red line is going to intersect my blue curve. Again, I just find press intersect. It's going to ask me for the regression or for the curve that I graphed in Y1. I'm going to go with the curve I graphed in Y1. For the second equation, it's saying are you want to intersect it with a line Y equals X. I'll press execute. Again, it gives me one. I toggle over. It gives me the second one. And it also gives me the equations at the top in blue, in red, intersections. It gives me the vocabulary. Fabulous tool. Uh, today's video, just about over. We'll do one more quick item, and then we will sign off for today until next week. Let's take a look at uh, one more G solve. Let's see if I can find the integral between the two curves. So I'm going to integral between the intersection, and it's going to ask me between the regression. No, I'm going to go with the curve that I graph, and the line y equals x. First one, execute. Second one, go over, press execute. There's the area between shaded. Again, all the information is there.
Um, next time, we will be looking at some more features of the Casio Prism. This has been a quick overview of some of the features you can do with the picture plotter and some of the mathematics you can do with the picture plotter. If you are curious, if I wanted to be able to see the data, you can see the data. It's saved in the list. The list will save an X value, a Y value, and a time value. And we'll do more of the advanced things later, like transpose axes. But that's it for this second episode of CMath Run. Hopefully you've been enjoying these. We will be doing more of these on a weekly basis. So I will sign off for today, and I will see you next week. Enjoy your prism. Enjoy the video. Tell your friends. YouTube CMath Run.